This Ramadan, there is something new going to happen on Peace TV. Be prepared. Welcome our Ramadan. Ramadan, the month of blessings. Suhr, Iftar, Taraweeh, Laylatul Qadr, Aitikaf, Eid ul Fitr, and many other practices that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did in this month of fasting. I'll be there for you throughout this glorious month of Ramadan. Let's make it more fruitful and reward worthy. Share it with me every day throughout this month of Ramadan. Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zahir. Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Beware of suspicion, for suspicion is the worst of false tales. And do not look for others' faults, and do not indulge in spying on one another, and do not practice nudge, that is, to offer a high price for something, in order to allure another customer who is interested in the thing. And do not be jealous of one another, and do not hate one another, and do not desert one another, and O Allah's worshippers, be brothers. Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 8, Kitab al-Adab, Book of Manners, Chapter 57, Hadith Number 6066. Oh, you who believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Qur'an every night of Ramadan, night of Ramadan. Welcome, O oh Ramadan, it is Ramadan, it is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Welcome to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakir. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we will be discussing acts which invalidate the fast and acts which are prohibited during the fast. So Dr. Zakia, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The first real issue and the question that I need to pose to you is can you enunciate or list the things which invalidate, the actions which invalidate the fast of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahibi ajmeen, amma abad, awuzu billahi minash shaytani rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, rabbi shali sadri wa yisalli amri, wa halul uddatu min lisani yafka wa kawli. As far as acts which invalidate the fast, they are listed in the Quran, as well as in the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 187, associate with them, that's your wife, and take whatever Allah gives you from them, that is the offspring, and eat and drink till the white thread of dawn appears different than the black thread. And then you fast and complete your fast till the nightfall. So here we get the three categories, eating, drinking, and sexual intercourse. And there are various other categories which are prohibited in the Sahih Hadith. Broadly, if you list the things that break the fast, there are approximately ten different things which break the fast. And you can categorize them into two categories. The first category is that 
which breaks the fast when we take it inside the body. In them, there are four things. The first is eating and drinking. Second is anything that falls in the same category as eating or drinking. Third is taking medicines, opals or injections which are in the form of nourishment or somewhat similar to eating and drinking, including blood transfusion. The fourth is somewhat similar to kidney dialysis, where the blood is taken out, it's purified and some nutrients are put into it and put back. The second category, that which comes out from the body, there are six things in them. Number one is sexual intercourse. Number two is masturbation. Number three is menstruation. Number four is postnatal bleeding. Number five is deliberate vomiting. And number six is letting out blood, somewhat similar to cupping or something similar to that. So in all, there are ten things which invalidate the fast. Of those ten things you've mentioned, could you now tell us which is considered to be the most serious and sinful act which invalidates the fast? The act which is the most sinful and most serious amongst all of them which invalidate the fast, it is sexual intercourse. That when you have sexual intercourse and when the two private parts meet, then your fast is invalidated, whether ejaculation takes place or not. And you have to repent for that. You have to complete the fast for that day and you have to make it up later and you have to pay a penalty, that's kafara. According to the Sahih Hadith, in which a beloved Prophet said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of fasting, Hadith number 1936, where a man comes to the Prophet and says that, I am ruined. Oh Prophet, I am ruined. The Prophet says, what is the matter? The man says, I had sex with my wife while I was fasting. So the Prophet says that, can you free a slave? So the man says, no, I cannot. Then the Prophet asks, can you fast consecutively for two months? Can you fast continuously for 60 days? The man says, no, I cannot. Then the Prophet says that, can you feed 60 poor people? And the man says, no, and the hadith continues. In short, we come to know from this hadith that if any person does a sexual intercourse, it is one of the major sins, it is the most serious and sinful amongst all the things that break the fast. The person who does this sin, he should immediately repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for forgiveness. He should complete his fast for that day and make up for that fast later on after Ramadan. And he has to pay a penalty. And the penalty we come to know from the hadith is that he either frees a slave if he can, if he does not have the money to free the slave, or he cannot find a slave to free, then he should fast for two consecutive months. Fast for 60 days. If he cannot do that also, then he should at least feed 60 poor people. And these are the three options that have been given for a person to pay as a penalty, as a kafara. But if a person can do the first thing, he should not jump to the second or the third. The first is freeing a slave. If he cannot do that, if he doesn't have the money or cannot find a slave, then he can go to the next option, that is fasting consecutively for 60 days. If he cannot do that, if he is unable to do that, continuously fasting for 60 days, if he fasts for a few days and then one day he doesn't fast, he should start again. He should fast consecutively for 60 days. If he doesn't have the capacity to do that, then what he can do is he can feed 60 poor people. And each poor person should be fed with approximately half sa. Each sa is equal to three handful of outstretched hand of wheat. So half sa per person or the food that is there of the land. So 60 poor people you should feed. This is the kafara, the penalty for a person who breaks a fast by having a sexual intercourse. The amount of food, just to clarify that, uh, for my own benefit, if you like. Do you think that that's equivalent to about a day's food, approximately? Yes, in short, it should be a day's food that's 
normal in that land. It may change in America, it may change in UK, it may change in India. But at that time, it was like one of these says that one man equal half sow of meat. And each sow of meat is outstretched, two hands outstretched. And the amount of wheat that comes in, that's equal to sa. So half of three. The other hadith says that one mud of meat, that is equal to one outstretched hand of wheat. The other hadith says that equivalent to fill a poor man's appetite, you know, his stomach. So in short, you should feed a poor person, 60 poor people you should feed. Approximately what is the food of that land that you should feed him. And if you can't find people in your land who are poor, then you look for the nearest place or? Yes, anywhere. And that's difficult in today's world that you cannot find 60 people to feed. I don't know any place in the world where you cannot find 60 people to feed. <laughs> it may not be a locality, but if you just go to the next locality in your city, surely, in your country, surely you can find. I wish to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may that time come. Ameen, ameen. Which will come, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Dr. Zakir, which is the second most serious and sinful act which invalidates the fast during Ramadan? The second most serious thing that breaks the fast or invalidates the fast, it is masturbation. And this we get from the hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, word number three, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1894, where the Prophet said that Allah Subhanahu Wa said that all the deeds of the son of Adam are for himself, except for fasting. It's for me. And I will reward him. And further he says that the person, he leaves, he abstains from eating and drinking and his desires for my sake. Allah says, the person abstains from eating, drinking and his desires for my sake. Now this desire, from here we come to know, it includes even masturbation. So when a person masturbates or ejaculates, whether by touching his wife or looking at his wife or, or for other reason or looking at any other woman, and if an ejaculation takes place, then the fast gets invalidated. He has to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and complete that day of fasting. And he should compensate for this fast, keep this fast later after the Ramadan gets over. But here, there is no kafara, there is no penalty. Because that penalty is only for a sexual intercourse. Here, because the intercourse hasn't taken place, there is no penalty. You should only repent, make up that fast, that fast should complete, and then make up for that fast later on. But if a person does not ejaculate, and if there is madi which comes out, fluid, then the fast does not break. Similarly, this is the prostatic fluid, the madi. And if the vadi comes out, that is after urination, a white fluid, then too the fast does not break. Only thing he has to do is a He should uh, wash the private parts and do wudu. The fast does not break. He can complete the fast and continue the fast. I think that would be very useful for a lot of people living in the West. And may Allah uh, protect us from Amin. following our desires to that level. Inshallah. So brothers and sisters, Inshallah, join us after the break. It is Ramadan. Muslim living in any part of the world, he is our brother. We should feel for him. Muslims are suffering. Muslims are butchered. Muslims are slain. And some of us even they don't feel, they don't cry over that. Where is the brotherhood? If one organ is in pain, the whole body feels that. Whether he's in India, whether he's in Far East, whether he's wherever the Muslim is, he is my brother. I should feel for him. The ultimate aim of education in Islam is to liberate you. Make you a liberated man and a woman because an educated mind cannot be fooled. An educated mind cannot be exploited. And Muhammad sallallahu will give the example. Talabul ilmi faridatun ala kulli muslimin wa muslim. Seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every single Muslim.
According to Islam, every human being is born good. So if you want to improve your character, you strengthen your faith in your Creator. There can be no good deeds without any faith at all. The first thing that you should do to improve your character is always to do whatever helps you to strengthen your faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are watching Peace TV. The solution for humanity. It is Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakir. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we are discussing acts which invalidate the fast. Dr. Zakir, something which seems on the surface of it to be very very simple but maybe not does eating and drinking fast fasting is it considered to be a major sin eating and drinking while fasting intentionally deliberately is a major sin for anyone eats intentionally while fasting it is a major sin and that person has to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has to make up for that fast later on after the Mazramda. And this food, whether it enters through the mouth, nourishment will break the fast, or if any liquid enters through the nose, that too breaks the fast, according to the Hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is mentioned in Sunnah Abu Dawud, volume number 2, in the book of fasting, Hadith number 2360, where the Prophet said that when you are doing wudu, you snuff the water in your nose excessively, except while fasting. This gives the indication that the water enters the nose and it enters the throat and goes into the stomach, that breaks the fast. So, but naturally any drink, any liquid that enters the nose and then goes into the stomach, through the throat, that too invalidates the fast. But if someone eats or drinks unintentionally, out of forgetfulness, then the fast does not break. And this happened many a time, the first few days of Ramadan. People are so used to getting up and eating, you know, and drinking water, going to the kitchen. So the first few days, it does happen with some people that they forget and they have the water or they eat not knowing that they're fasting. So if a person unintentionally or out of forgetfulness drinks or eats, the fast has to be completed, it's not invalidated. This is again according to the Hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3 in the book of fasting, hadith number 1933, where the beloved prophet said that if a person eats or drinks unintentionally, he should complete his fast. And what he has eaten and drunk, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, it's mentioned in Ibn Majah, word number 3, hadith number 2043, as well as 2045, our beloved prophet said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has excused my ummah from forgetfulness, from mistakes, and if something is forced on them. If something is done out of mistake, out of forgetfulness, out of compulsion, Allah excuses you. So only intentional eating and drinking breaks the fast, and it's a major sin. Thank goodness for the mercy of Allah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Dr. Zakir, can a person undergo blood transfusion and or except an injection which nourishes his or her body during the fast. As far as blood transfusion is concerned, it comes in the same category as getting some nourishment. When you transfuse blood into the body, blood is considered as something of nourishment, something similar to food, because the food that we eat, it enters the stomach, goes into the bloodstream, and that's what makes up the blood. So when you transfuse blood, it's taken as though it's a sort of nourishment and food entering the body, so that breaks the fast. Similarly, if you put any food via the rice tube into the stomach, that too breaks the fast. If it's parental feeding, it breaks the fast. Or if you inject anything which is in a form of nourishment, then that breaks the fast. Even kidney dialysis, as I mentioned earlier, that if you take out blood from kidney and you purify it, 
and add into it food nutrients and chemicals and put back into the body, that too breaks the fast. Taking any injection, whether intravenous, whether intramuscular or subcutaneous, if it does not contain nourishment, if it contains the form of nourishment, it breaks the fast. If it's only for medicinal purpose, not containing nourishment, then that does not invalidate the fast and the person can take that. I'm sure that you uh, drew on your uh, knowledge as a medical doctor as well as a doctor of the human soul then. <laughs> it's very useful indeed. Not a dissimilar question in a way, but um, this time it's regarding whether a person can donate something from his body, donate blood in this case. Is that allowed during the fast? When a person donates blood, it's somewhat like cupping. You know, cupping means removing blood from the body to the surface, either by sucking or by cupping. It is somewhat similar. As far as this is concerned, there is difference of opinion among the scholars. Can you donate blood or is cupping allowed while fasting or can a person cup? There's a hadith which is mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number two, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2364, where a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anyone who cups and gets cupped, they break their fast. Is a person who cups and a person who gets cupped breaks the fast. But there's also another hadith in Sahih Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1938, where it's mentioned that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was cupped while fasting. But because of these two hadiths, there's a difference of opinion in the scholars. There's one group of scholars who say that because Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave a commandment that the person who gets cupped and the person who cups, he breaks the fast, cupping is prohibited, blood donation is prohibited. But the other hadith is an action. The first hadith is a commandment. So when the commandment and action, if it touches, the commandment has got more value. So based on this, there is a group of scholars who say that blood donation is haram. Amongst these scholars, we have Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. We have Sheikh bin Baz who says that cupping and blood donation is haram. We have the great scholar Sheikh Utaimi who says it's haram. Sheikh Saleh Fozan and Sheikh Jibreen. All of these scholars say cupping is haram. And Sheikh Jibreen says that if a person donates blood, it's like cupping, therefore it's haram. But if he does it to save somebody's life, it is permissible, but yet it breaks the fast and he has to make up for that fast later on. Now there's another group of scholars where Sheikh Nasr al-Albani, he says that the earlier hadith of Abu Dawud, it has been abrogated by the hadith of Sayyid Bukhari. Therefore, cupping is allowed and donating blood is allowed. So the second group of scholars who say donating blood is allowed and cupping is allowed while fasting and does not break the fast. We have Sheikh Nasr al-Albani, we have amongst the Sahaba Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, we have Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, we have Imam Malik, we have Imam Shafi. So there is another group of scholars who say that blood donating does not break the fast. So based on this, there are some scholars who say it's makro. Some scholars say that if there is such a large difference of opinion, so if it has to be done, avoid it and do it after sunset. So we have a difference of opinion as far as blood donation is concerned. But as far as the other things are concerned, for example, if there is a small bleeding due to any injury, that does not break the fast. There is no difference of opinion in this. Or if you take blood only for testing, a few ml of blood is removed from the body. For testing, this does not break the fast. Or an injury and a cut, the blood comes out, doesn't break the fast. Or if it's a nosebleed, or bleeding of nose, it doesn't break the fast. Or if it's a minor surgery, where little blood flows out, it doesn't break the fast. If excessive blood flows out in a blood surgery, which is equivalent to blood donation, then it breaks the fast. So as far as the second part is concerned about blood taking out for testing, nose bleed or minor bleeding, there is no difference of opinion. All of them agree that this does not break the fast. These are issues which frequently come up in conversations in the UK and I believe that we've answered quite a few of them there today, so very, very beneficial indeed. In the case of a person who vomits intentionally, or unintentionally, is the ruling the same? 
regarding whether or not it invalidates the fast. As far as vomiting is concerned, our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's a Sahih Hadith, which appears in Tirmidhi, in the book of fasting, Hadith number 720, our beloved Prophet said that anyone who vomits involuntarily, then he should not make up for the fast. But the person who vomits voluntarily, vomits deliberately, then he has to make up for the fast. And the same hadith we repeated in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number 2, in the book of fasting, hadith number 2374, our beloved Prophet said that anyone who vomits suddenly, that means involuntary, suddenly, then he should not atone for it. That means the fast is valid, he should not make up for it. But anyone who vomits deliberately, then he should atone for it. That means he has to make up for the fast later. So if someone vomits unintentionally, the fast is not invalidated. He can complete the fast. But someone vomits deliberately, like putting a finger in his throat and vomiting, or pressing his stomach and vomiting, or purposely smelling something which is very nasty and continues doing that, and then he vomits. Or he looks at something which is undesirable and he keeps on looking at it continuously and then vomits. So all these come under the act of deliberately vomiting. If you vomit deliberately, then you have to make up for the fast. If it's unintentionally, but if the vomit comes to your mouth and then you again swallow it, that will break the fast. So if the vomit comes out involuntary, let the vomit come out. Don't suppress it. Then the fast is not broken. But if it comes and then you swallow the vomit back into your stomach, that will break the fast. Yes. If you again swallow the vomit which has come out. So the vomit comes out, let the vomit come out involuntary, that will not break the fast. I'd like to know uh, whether it's permissible or can one marry in Ramadan? As far as marrying in the month of Ramadan is concerned, there is no text in the Quran or any say hadith which I know where it is forbidden to marry in the month of Ramadan. A person can marry in any month of the year. But since in Ramadan, he has to abstain, besides abstaining from food and drink, he has to abstain from sexual intercourse. So it depends upon him that when he marries in the month of Ramadan, the lady he marries is a new wife. Mm -hmm. So will he be able to suppress his feeling during the daytime, from the beginning of dawn to sunset, that will he be able to abstain? That is a test. If he can abstain from any sexual intercourse, then he can marry. But since a person marries in the month of Ramadan, it's a new wife, he has to spend time. So therefore, if he has doubts, it's advisable that he delays his marriage after the month of Ramadan and he spends time in zikr and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But per se, marrying in the month of Ramadan is not haram. I see. Okay. Thank you very much for that. I'm sure that's cleared up a lot. So brothers and sisters, why not ask your friends to join us same time tomorrow when we will be discussing part two, acts which invalidate the fast. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. يومنا صبر ورق بدموع البائسين رمضان قد أهل بالصيام وأقل مسعدا أهلا وفي الله تهو A friendly message by Dr. Zakir Way to salvation The way to salvation has been prescribed by our Creator in His last testament, the glorious Quran in Surah Al-As Chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3. Wal as, my time. Innal insana lafi khus. Indeed, mankind is in loss. Illa lazina amanu. Except those who have believed. Wa amanu salihat. And done righteous deeds. Wa tawasaw bil haq. And advised each other to truth. Wa tawasaw bil sabr. And advised each other to patience. There are minimum four criteria required for any human being to enter Jannah, that is paradise. These are Iman, that is faith, 
امن صالحات دیٹ از رائٹس ڈیڈ وتوا صوب الحق دیٹ از ایڈوائزنگ ایچ ادر ٹو تھروت دیٹ از داوت الاسلام کالنگ پیپل ٹو سبمٹ ٹو گاڈ اینڈ وتوا صوب الصبر ایڈوائزنگ ایچ ادر ٹو پیشنس اٹس سگنیفیکنس ہیز بین ایمفیسائز بائی امام شافی ہو سیٹ اف پیپل ور ٹو پونڈر آن دی سورا اٹ وڈ ہیو بین سفیشینٹ فار دی سالویشن Peace TV, the solution for humanity.